So we're all familiar with the definition of a click in a graph. A click of a graph G is a complete subgraph of G. Or it may also be defined as a subset of the vertex set of G, such that any two vertices in the set are adjacent in the graph. Two types of clicks we're often interested in are maximal clicks and maximum clicks. In this video, we'll just clear up some potential confusion between these two types of clicks, as well as going over an example that will help us practice our understanding of the definitions. Let me know in the comments if the music is distracting, but during this holiday season, I'd like to have some fun and just put some of my favorite seasonal jams in the background. So let's keep our spirits up and talk about clicks. Here are the definitions we're talking about. So first, here in purple, we've got the definition of a maximal click. A click is maximal if and only if it is not a proper subgraph of another click. So this means a click is maximal when it cannot be extended by including another vertex. Of course, if a click can be extended, for example, consider this little click here, if it can be extended, there must be some other vertex in the graph adjacent to all vertices in the click. And then we could extend the click by including that vertex. And then in green, we have the definition of a maximum click. A maximum click of a graph is a click with as many or more vertices than any other click in the graph. That should seem pretty reasonable based on the word maximum. It's a click in the graph such that there are no clicks with more vertices. And notice the wording here that we say a maximum click is a click with as many or more vertices than any other click in G. This is telling us that it's possible there are multiple maximum clicks in a graph. So let's jump into an example to really flesh these concepts out. So do you see any clicks in this graph? I hope so. If not, revisit the definition of click. One click we might notice is right here. This is a complete subgraph with two vertices. Then we may ask, is this click maximal? If it is maximal, then we may also want to ask if it's maximum. If it is not maximal, then it's certainly not maximum. There is a number of ways we could go about checking if this click is maximal. One way is to just arbitrarily pick a vertex of the click, suppose we pick A, then check every neighbor of A. If we find a neighbor of A that is also adjacent to every other vertex in the click, in this case the only other vertex is F, so if we find such a vertex, then the click is not maximal, because we could extend it by including that vertex. We can see that process very quickly here in this example. The only neighbor of A besides F, so the only neighbor outside of the click, is E. Then, is this vertex E adjacent to every other vertex in the click? Indeed it is, it's adjacent to F. Thus, this click is not maximal, because we could extend it by including the vertex E. Then, what about this click? Is this click maximal? We can easily determine that it is. If this click were not maximal, then it could be extended by including another vertex and the appropriate edges, which would mean that F E and A all have to be adjacent to some other vertex outside of this click. We see that neither A nor F are adjacent to any vertices outside the click, so this click can't be extended, hence it is maximal. If you want to see a bit more of a detailed description of this thought process, check out my lesson on maximal clicks. Now that we've found a maximal click, we might wonder if this click is maximum. Is there any other click in the graph that has more vertices? That can be a very time-consuming thing to determine, but in this example, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to find all maximal clicks of the graph, and then whichever one has the most vertices, or whichever several clicks have the most vertices, those are our maximum clicks. The next click we'll look at will help draw the distinction between maximal and maximum clicks. We know we've got no more work to do with A and F since neither of them are adjacent to any vertices outside this click, so they're not going to be a part of any other maximal clicks. However, E will be since it is adjacent to another vertex outside of this first click we looked at. We can see that E and D form a click with two vertices. Then, if we try to determine whether or not this click is maximal, it would actually pass the test that we sort of described earlier. Both E 
and D are adjacent to vertices outside of the click. Failing the test does tell us that a click cannot be extended, but passing the test does not mean that it can be extended. If a click passes the test, we've got to dig a little bit deeper to figure out whether or not it's maximal. In this case, since none of the neighbors of E outside of the click are adjacent to D, we know the click can't be extended because there's no other vertex to include that's adjacent to both E and D. So this click is maximal. And of course, we can immediately see that this click is not maximum because the first maximal click we found had more vertices. And then you probably don't need me to take you super slow through the thought process to find this next maximal click. It looks exactly like our first maximal click, but it has different vertices. So this is another maximal click in the graph. Now we can be sure that we have found all maximal clicks of the graph because the union of these three maximal clicks is the entire graph. Thus, we can be sure that whichever of these maximal clicks have the most vertices, those are the maximum clicks of the graph. In this case, we have two maximum clicks. Both of these clicks have three vertices, which is greater than the only other maximal click, which has two vertices. And so we see that these two maximal clicks are also maximum. So again, a maximal click is a click that is not a proper subgraph of another click. Remember the first click we looked at with A and F was not maximal because it's a proper subgraph of this click. A maximum click of a graph is a click with as many or more vertices than any other click in the graph. And so by definition, every maximum click will be maximal, but not every maximal click will be maximum. And just one last thing to develop this example a little more, let's just slightly change the graph. Adding in this new vertex that we will call G, along with a few new edges. After making this change, a few more clicks have been created, like this click with three vertices containing G, F, and A or this other click containing three vertices, G, E, and A. A more interesting click that has been created is this click with four vertices containing G, A, F, and E. So now we see after making this change, this click is no longer maximum, and neither is this one. The click with A, F, and E is also no longer maximal. In this new graph, this is the only maximum click. This click has four vertices, as many or more than every other click in the graph. And I think that will do it. So here before we go is an example to try on your own. Find a maximum click. You can also let me know if it's the only maximum click and all non-maximal clicks of the following graph. I think it's a bit more of a challenge and test of your understanding to find the non-maximal clicks instead of finding the maximal clicks for this example. So let me know what you get for this exercise down in the comments and I'll leave the solution in the description. I hope this video helped you understand a bit more about maximum and maximal clicks. Oh, and one last thing I should mention, the number of vertices in a maximum click of a graph is called that graph's click number. So if we call this graph G, the click number, denoted little omega of G is equal to four, the number of vertices in a maximum click. And again, that is the lowercase Greek letter omega, denoting the click number of the graph. All right, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.